Me, you being nothing. Seriously, I make up 90% of the visible universe and 62% of all the elements in the human body. I'm the foundation of almost everything under the sun, which I power, by the way. Your first taste of my power came in 1766, when chemist Henry Cavendish dissolved metals in acid to produce what he called inflammable air, also known as hydrogen gas. Since then, you've tried to harness my power. And as you're about to see, I've proven time and again that my power cannot be contained. Does she really cruise at 76 miles per hour? She does. Three days to New Jersey, two and a half days back. Two full days faster than an ocean liner. Ha! See? Speed and luxury. Mr. Lehrmann, <laughs> smile for a picture. Your room is one of our newer cabins with windows in the floor. I don't really like heights. Ah, ah there he is, Frau Donner. Our captain, Max Proust. Glad to have you, Frau Donner. Please, call me Matilda. Ma Frau Donner, tell me, first time on a Zeppelin? My husband had to convince me. He flew on the Graf Zeppelin four years ago and hasn't stopped raving about it since. <laughs> but for me, the idea of being so high above the ocean, it just, it doesn't seem natural. Ah, that American woman, Amelia Earhart, is planning to fly all the way around the world in a few weeks in a tiny double-engine plane. I assure you, a trip on the Hindenburg will be like a ride on a Ferris wheel by comparison. <laughs> Excuse us, Matilda. Regarding the matter we discussed earlier, the threats against the ship, the company's taken the necessary precautions. We are cleared for departure. Oh, and Captain Proust, let's keep this between ourselves, shall we? Of course. Give it back! Give it back! Give it back! Give it back! Do you really always hear you going to start this here? Boys, a picture with your mother. Uh, Lächeln! Say cheese! Beautiful. I can't find the tickets. Where are the tickets? They're in the pocket. to appreciate everything your father and I do for you. I'll stay right behind me. Boys, come along. You're lucky she had enough tickets. Maybe we're gonna leave you in Germany. You complain too much. Zeppelins have been called the silver whales of the sky, and I like the term gas bag better. I should. There's enough of me on board to fill 80 Olympic-sized swimming pools. I don't power her. She has four diesel engines that do that. So what's my job? Let's just say I sweep her off her feet. Kerris, New Jersey, from which point we are going to bring you a description of the landing of the mammoth airship Hindenburg, which was due here in America this morning at dawn, completing the first half Atlantic crossing of the 1937 season. Charlie Nelson, one of our WLSA producers, is here at my side working the controls. He rides a transmission. We need to land right away. 
We need to know why the tail heavy before we convey off. There's a protocol, Ernst. By the time we do that, another storm will be here. A little explanation here. The ship is tail heavy because I'm leaking from somewhere. Bruce is right. He really should find out why before they land. Look, Max. It comes to this. What scares you more? Landing right now? Or explaining to the Fuhrer why you delayed us even longer? Because he will want to know. Do you want this to end your career? All crew to landing stations. Yes, Captain. Over the field several times. Now you may wonder why the ship didn't land the moment it arrived at Lakehurst. Safety comes first, as it always should. There are a number of important persons on board, and no doubt the new commander, Captain Max Proust, is thrilled too, for this is his great moment. The first time he's commanded the Hindenburg. On previous flights, he acted as chief officer under Captain Lehman. She's practically standing still now. They've dropped ropes out of the nose of the ship and they've been taken a hold of down on the field by a number of men. So, I'm leaking. A lot. And the ship's not moving, which means I'm not getting sucked out fast enough. Not. Good. Worse, the ship's skin and its framework are both electrically charged. And when they drop the wet landing lines, that grounds the framework, but not the skin. So for those of you who flunked high school physics, this causes this. Bruce knows better than to land in these conditions, but he's betting against me that he can pull it off. I guess this is why they call it human error.